All right, Blue, you be good. Johnny, got the time, Blue? Oh, am I Johnny now? Um, hey, have you seen that cat over there? Looked like she was just washed up. Think she did some bread? Nah, well, more, more for you than Blue. Maybe we should leave a crust or two behind. She'll go for it when she's comfortable. Hit the bow. There's the cat. I remember seeing it last time. I was so sad I couldn't pet it. Oh, receptionist. There you are. Lula, that's who you were. Lula, here you are. Marianne has the rest of the evening off, so I'm minding the desk. That was it. No, I was thinking of Marianne. I hope she's painting. You're not too busy. Any word on the address? Nice place. Oh yeah, you haven't seen this place. If I'm in the middle of something, I just let the phone ring. It's soothing in a way. The results just came in by courier. Good news, Donald and his assistants were able to, make, to sort through the noise. I had Rick cross-reference the results against some of our records. He found a corresponding mail stop on the Echo River route. As it happens, the nightly ferry is scheduled to make its stop here shortly. The ferryman carries the mail and collects the garbage as well. I'm sure you could catch a ride out that way. I feel like she's kind of insinuating something, and I'm not sure if I appreciate it. You're welcome to wait here. I have to get back to packing. Are you going somewhere? I might. I'm feeling impulsive. I'd like to be ready. Maybe back to Mexico. It's been years. They still have one of my sculptures in a museum down there, did you know? Big, ugly iron thing. Time to have it scrapped, anyway. Safe travels. Try to stay out of water. It's colder than it looks, and deep. I feel like that's a metaphor. Or maybe it's just real advice because they're robots. Ah, can't go back upstairs. Is there- how long do we have to wait? Oh, who knows? Alright, what happened? Bug. Shannon, what? Nothing? Takawa, up to you. It's okay, you can tell them. It doesn't matter anymore. Shannon, fine. So, we were in that graveyard. Yes, tell me. Oh my gosh, tell me what happened in that graveyard. Do we get a flashback or something? Don't hold out on me now. Next scene, we'll finally figure out what happened in the graveyard. I'm sure it's a flashback. Where the strangers come from. Okay, and now the others are gonna say, let's wait outside and look for lizards. Well, this can't be right. This looks like a church. Um, it's muddy. Yeah, that's what he said. Crystals in the mud. Okay. Wanna stay outside? Why? Uh, why? I think I saw a lizard. I'll stay with him. Okay, we'll make it quick. Up, up, up we go. Look at the floor. The church floor is cold metal, scuffed and flexed by unknown boot heels. Still. A handmade apparatus from the production of moonshine, for the production of moonshine, assembled from scavenged metal and natural materials. Oh, so this must be the the hard time whiskey. Well, I guess we might as well sit and wait. Wait for the strangers to come. Shannon, I don't know what I expected. Conway, the strangers. He kept saying. Conway, another dead end. Kind of big already, isn't it? Donald's a stranger. Hell, you and I are practically strangers. Listen, earlier in the mine, I didn't want to talk about it, but I do. You don't have to talk about it. What did you find down there? When I saw Weaver, she was on TV. I was testing a pretty simple tube repair, flipping through channels to check the saturation, and she was just there. It was kind of horrible. I mean, I told you she disappeared suddenly, ran away, but we thought, you thought she was dead. Yeah. I guess I don't like saying it. Dead. And then the next time I flipped the channel, t flipped a channel too, Weaver. It's burned in my vision now. She's standing in a room. The walls are a black kind of gray. There's tape on the walls like markings and desks, a classroom maybe? 
the camera is in the corner, so it's this sort of 45 degree angle into the room. And there's Weaver right in the center of the picture. I stopped turning the dial. No, I think I stopped breathing. Eventually she spoke, but there was no real sound. Just this awful hum. I read the closed captions. She said to go to the mine. I'd find something there. I can't remember her exact words. Whenever I try, I get distracted. Fuzzy, I... Shan coughs into her sleeve. It's so dusty in here. <coughs> right? Yeah, really dusty. I hadn't noticed. Maybe it's me. I'm kind of allergic to... What the hell was that? Did you hear that? Must have been the church outside. Must have been the church settling. We should check outside. Must have... Oops. Maybe we should have gotten up and down. That would explain why it's so dusty. If it's going up and down into the mines. Oh! His leg is vibrating on the same frequency. I'm controlling the other guy. Hello, visitors. Stranger activates the tape player slung on his shoulder. A crackly drawl echoes in the room. It is patient and sounds like it should be smiling. Doolittle. My regrets. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long. We don't see a lot of foot traffic these days. I guess you're here about the job. I'm afraid we only have one opening at the moment. Horrible business. Um... We're actually looking for... What's this job? Certainly, I'll tell you everything you need to know. I've only just met you, but I feel certain there's a place for you here. I'll just take you over to meet the dispatcher, show you the trucks, get you familiarized. We can converse as we goes. To Conway, what is this place? Well, it's not an old church. Some kind of factory? Yeah, maybe, but for what? Why hid it away like this? What's that smell? Like bread? Baking bread? Doolittle, please follow me. Ah, oh, yes, I am Doolittle. You could totally make her trip out. Doolittle, I have to ask you to step in here for a moment. This is for your safety, and adjust your outfits just a bit. There's some protective headwear up on the wall back there. Please remove your shoes and eyeglasses. I'm not taking off my shoes. We don't wear eyeglasses. So that won't be an issue. Well, do us a favor and put on the headwear anyway. Just this way. That running animation. Very nice. Very nice, you two. So yeah, she's hitting the button. That's probably important to know. Okay. They look kind of like slaves, wearing the drab gray colors. I'm guessing that's where we're going. Or maybe we're going right here. Sham, wow, check this stuff out. It must be decades old, but it's in perfect condition. How do you think they keep it like that? You really like old electronics. Yeah, I've got it bad. <laughs> That's why I got into this business. To keep old stuff like this running. Seems like such a shame to let it just fall into ruin, you know? Like that computer back in the cave. Zandu. Decades, decades of engineering. Thousands of years of mathematics and philosophy. All petrified into living stone. How could he just let that fall apart? Do little. More new arrivals this evening. Plenty to do. Got to relay the formula. Uh, what job are they working? We actually just need to ask you about a computer. What formula? A? Oh, the formula. Changed our lives. Once years ago, we were as prisoners to the intricacies of our debts here. We'd have to account for everything on paper. 
compounding interest by hand, reassessing amortization and leveraging assets distribution distributions according to the nightly merit decay. Then she stepped out of the dark caves to show us the light of the formula. Oh yes, Weaver was a brilliant mathematician. She had a brilliant grasp of mathematics and a saint-like way of speaking right through the numbers. Now we just plug our daily numbers into the formula and run it all through the adding machine. We occasionally suffer from some surplus drift, but she instructed us on all the necessary adjustments. It was devastating to see our reverse mathematician, our revered mathematician go, but she was needed elsewhere. Her legacy abides. What jobs are they working? We actually just need to... You see, it's like, it's so slippery, because I want to know as much information about these strangers as I can, because it's taken so long to get here, and I don't want to cut it short with the computer talk. I don't know that it's been settled just yet. You see, sometimes we take on newcomers already in debt to the distillery. I don't know if I, are those the people from the... I, it's hard, I can't remember what they look like. Those might be the people from Harry's Bar. One of the four men will find something for them to do. Chip away at their sum until it's all settled. It all came due. That's what I'm doing here. Chipping away. That's what we're all doing. So why would we want to work there if we're not in debt? Except he is in debt. His leg. Like, you could tell how deep in debt he is. I can't walk towards them. It's not been so horrible yet, though. I don't know why they were saying it was so horrible, besides the fact there's a skeleton person running around, glowing and being menacing with their tape recording device. Ah oh, yes, the shuttle. Here's the fleet, haha. <laughs> oh, we just use these to get around eternally. Uh, what do you do here? Oh, I'm a copywriter, not you everyone. I'm a copywriter. Text on bottles and flyers, ad copy, that sort of thing. Discerning shades and heartsick lovers have long known the taste of hard times and held it in favor over all other spirits. That was one of mine. So if the trucks are just east aways in shipping, you can become acquainted with the dispatcher there. Give me a tap on the shoulder if you see something that catches your eye. Always happy to show off the facilities. Sublime machinery. Oop, I didn't mean to hit that. Don't do that while he's driving, that might be bad. We're in logistics, down to shipping. Yeah, this is awful going an awful long way. The only reason I'm really like going along with this also is because Conway is going to need a new job, so if he could find a job, and his fortune was told he would be in driving. Nope, okay, let's go look at the truck. Do the till here it is, and I have to ask as a matter of course, what kind of experience do you have driving trucks? I drove deliveries for an antique shop up until this last run. I used to drive long hauls. I don't know about the long hauls, but... Ah, precious cargo. You'll do just fine. And you can drive safely, can't you? I haven't any doubts now. It's only after what happened with Miguel this evening. What happened with Miguel this evening? Well, the dust is still clearing, of course. Perhaps he closed his eyes a moment, or simply had a curb too devilishly. I do pity ill-fated Miguel. He was good company and slow to anger. But if we're speaking confidently, confidentially, well, with all that lost product to be repaid, bourbon and glass dashed across the interstate, and a few casks too, were all just thankful he had no next of kin. 
So let's see if we can ring up the dispatcher. Doolittle starts the truck and switches on the CB radio. A deep, monotonous voice drones from the dashboard speaker. 1020 on the load, come back. Radio voice number one. Up the Hummingbird Cave, 1012, City Kitty. Doolittle into the kitty. This is a good time, dispatch. We may have found Miguel's replacement. Though, thought you might like to get acquainted. 10 9, come again. To Conway, introduce yourself. Hello? Tell some. Dispatch something. Im oh. Tell dispatch something impressive about yourself. They're very well regarded here. Um. Um. You folks know anything about my old, old composer? You folks. <laughs> 99 wheel holder. Gotta pay the water bill. Oh, ah, so. I'm certain they'll call back before long. Let's take a look around the truck, eh? Is this the same truck that Miguel crashed? Wipers. Might as well check it to make sure there's not something wrong with it. Control the wipers with this knob here. The control. They seem to have a decent torque to them, eh? Can't say how they'd fare in an ice storm, but we must never delay a shipment. Better to assume the risk. Um... You folks watch the weather closely? I wouldn't know it if I saw it. Too many years of climate control. Have I mentioned I rarely, if ever, leave our facility? I wouldn't know rain if it drowned me. I'm sure the wipers are fine. They ditched class for the day to drive in the rain. It was pointless to say I'll review. He was a lost cause and she didn't need it anyway. She was smart, or it was time to cut out. Oh, he's. This is one of the side effects of the med. Of the meds, him getting lost in time. Shitty date for it, though. 83 in Biblical Flood. They went to see a movie. It was some anonymous swashbuckler film about real men and women. Real fights, real tights, real lips, fake blood. They brought a flask. They smoked cigarettes, drank off a hooch, whistled buckets of rain. She sang about someone she wanted wants to have loved. Brown hair curled around her ear. She had a voice like scotch whiskey. She poured another drink. And another and another. She worried it was getting dark out. Then it was light out, getting light out. They ended up in someone else's field, in someone else's car. An early morning joyride and a sunrise collision. Collision? She got out of the bus and he... She got on the bus and he hiked back to his car. He sat in his car and went over some options. Chicago? Toronto? Faro? Seemed like a whole a bold and impulsive gesture at the time. As he pulled out of the parking lot, he removed his hands from the steering wheel for a moment and felt the car drift into a decision. Years later, he'd think on this as a moment he himself started drifting. A modest technology, but suited to the job, eh? Plenty, plenty good enough. Headlights. Do headlights work fine, see? That's important. Most of our product goes out at night. You never know when you'll run into the daylight. And dust can be treacherously misleading with all the indirect light. The magic hour, eh? Um... Driver sleep in the day yet? Sure. Sure, those that sleep. Miguel pulled extra day shifts when he could. Sometimes he'd help me, you know? Sometimes over in bottling. He shouldn't have been out driving at dusk. Weird shadows, soft light, dangerous. Um This is this is Dream World. And we had to get off the highway. Too loud, too murky. He turned off the gray cornfield in Indiana. Empties rattled under the passenger seat. He kept them over there so the smell when it spread. That window was always open a crack. He had to pull over. He just needed a nap, even if he ran late. He couldn't night drive in his condition. Are we doing Conway's story or Miguel's? He couldn't... He just needed a nap. Even if he ran late. He's only human. He'd been out since the headlights were on. Didn't even stop for coffee. He crapped a beer at three eyes on the road, half past four, and he dodged some stray cattle. The headlights were coming back on. Rockford could wait. Early morning couldn't be much worse than late night. What could they care? He just needed a few hours. So, moving on. Tyrus. 
Oh, sure. I know you'll want to look. Kick the tires. That's the thing we do, isn't it? As though our knees could exert the kind of force these tires see out there on the road. We're more likely to hurt ourselves. Isn't that the way, eh? Tires look fine. Sure, they're big machines, but they can be fragile. Absolutely. A truck deserves care and fear and respect. Like a glass elephant. Miguel was a good driver, but he didn't have the quality of deference. What kind of man was he, Miguel? Conway sat in the dim room full of folding chairs. The walls and ceilings were painted with old smoke. Someone read from the book. He drank coffee with a little sugar. So it remembered my coffee choice from earlier. He listened. He was just waiting for it to be over. The speaker list oh yeah, missing up voices. The speaker listen listed all the things we tried that we most people in the room were probably there by court order. A few others shared. They spoke in abstractions like a program of actions, a good orderly direction, spiritual but not religious, religious but not spiritual. All the things we tried. Then it was over. They clasped sweaty hands through a short prayer and stepped back into the morning. He knew it was time to hit the bar. He started walking. He was always walking these days. It was good to slow down. It felt clarifying, like a walking meditation. The road ran by a creek for a while. He took an unforeseen detour where the creek and road parted, followed the edges of the water. He skipped a few stones alone, then stopped to consider an overturned boat. It was it was a kind of serenity, that wandering and looking without purpose. He was coming to rely on those moments. Now what else can we show you? The back. Looks like it's just about ready to go out. We have some good, strong folks in shipping here, so you never need to worry about loading if you don't want to. Bit hard in knees, on the knees and back at our age, eh? Are we the same age? Of course, you'll have to unload at the destination, but that's the job. And some drivers like the extra shift stacking and loading here. Did Miguel load his own trucks? I shouldn't really do any lifting these days. I see. Well, surely we can spare a dolly and carrying strap for your health and safety. Um, Conway woke up in bailed hay. Everything was too bright. His head hurt. The usual Lisette and Ira argued loudly just outside the open barn door. She wanted Ira to take him outside and shower, have some coffee, get to the job. Ira said there wasn't time. Conway was in no condition. It was an important job. They couldn't put it off. Ira said to let the deadbeat sleep it off and then send him packing. He said Charlie could do the job. Conway closed his eye. Conway stepped out of the barn, shielding his eyes. He tried to say something reassuring, but just sort of stumbled around it. Lysette looked away. Ear just spat and went inside to wake Charlie. Ear was a stubborn man, so Charlie went along, and Conway drifted out again and didn't hear about the accident until months later. Oh, was that why Charlie was on the roof? Was because he should have gone, but then he didn't, so Charlie went, and then Charlie was in the accident? Too little. So what's next? I guess back to the radio. The truck's radio crackles back to life. Dispatcher, driver, come back. Too little. Ah, there's dispatch. Now tell them about your experience. Tell them the truck's in good shape. Tell them you'll start in the morning. Um. I feel like whatever I'm going to say, it's going to get cut off. I really can't. Yeah, we've got to finish this delivery in a few. Radio voice number two, 1033 dispatch. Got two black eyes and a flock of crocodiles. Come back. 10-4, back it down, prick your eyelids. Driver, come back, Lem. Too little. 10-4. Dispatcher, come back, wheel holder. Come away. Um, 10-4. Remain silent. Too little to Conway. Dispatch is addressing you. In, into radio. He's here, dispatch. Dispatcher, got your ears on? Good, listen to this. Silence. So, I think that went well. Let's head back to the logistics and seal the deal, eh? And I've got one more thing to show you. I don't, I think he was being sarcastic when he said it was going well. 
let's head back upstairs, eh? I have one more thing to show you. Wait, we... We only came here looking for some answers about this stupid moldy computer. Oh, the old man in the cave with the moldy computer. Uh, yes, that old man. That black mold. It's drawn to whiskey. It feeds on ethanol fumes, you see. As we age the whiskey, some of it inevitably evaporates into the air. The angels share. It goes through the vents here and out into the caves. If we can scrape up that mold, we can usually apply some pressure and cold to it. Squeeze and condense the angels share back into dr drinkable whiskey. Every drop counts when you're making a living on the stuff. So we'd go down and scrape it off his equipment, just like any other place it grows. He kept sending his people here to drive us away. Paranoid, truly paranoid. Well, now we have the formula, so we don't need to go collecting mold. Since we stopped going down there, I'm sure the mold has gotten pretty thick. Try cleaning off the timing crystal. That'll get you going. I'm sure of it. So I wonder if I had not said anything about the timing crystal, because it gave me three options for what was wrong, if that would then... Like, if it was a phrase I'd have to type in, like, if this would be so different. So, join me upstairs. No. We've got places to be. Take that. Hope I'm still in control of him. Guess that's not gonna work. All the way upstairs? Oh, there's other people left. It's gotten quite late. If you don't mind me... We gotta put away the hats, of course. Proper procedures and all that jazz. And back, 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 up we go, up we go, up we go. Ah, an adding machine. No wonder it's like a church. If they worship the formula, do little. Here it is, a beauty, wouldn't you say? It's an antique, you know? Sham, what is it? Why, it's an adding machine. This is where we come for our daily ritual, to calculate the day's interest and repayment according to the formula. I usually do so at the beginning of my shift, so I know how many hours I need in order to keep up. Yes, I believe you'll do well here, sir. Happy to have you. Congratulations. You're hired. Shannon, wait, we can't. It's customary here to start each day with a shift drink. Let's make it special. Mark the occasion. This is the top shelf stuff now. Single barrel. Chen, he doesn't. Down the hatch. Venom memory amours. Latin. Dude, you don't have to drink. Oh, wait, there's people. I think we're surrounded. In the shadows, I can kind of see people. Wait a second, I- wait a second. I'm not- I'm trying to move my mouse away, because I was trying to look around. But it's making me- no, don't click that, don't click that. Don't! Well, now it moves. Stop, stop, you little- ugh. Decent enough. Welcome aboard. You've done it now, man. He's not working for you, we have to get back to this- our- he has a delivery to make. What's this? Not working? Are you turning down this opportunity? Come on, she's right. I have to make this, uh... I'm disappointed. And I'm afraid that leaves us with a delicate problem. As I indicated, this is top shelf stuff you're drinking now. It isn't cheap. If it's not your first drink, well... And there's the matter of this tour just now. My time and experience are built at quite a premium. Well, shoot. This is not good for you, my friends. You're in quite deep by my back of envelope estimations. Well, we have that in common, I suppose. All of us. Yes, I'm afraid you'll have to work this off somehow. It's just the way of it. Shan, what's happening right now? Do the... You can start tomorrow. Take the time to settle your affairs. Of course, the interest begins to compound immediately, and, well, we'll go over the formula when you get here. I should get back to work. See you tomorrow, then. Well, that was a big mistake going there. 
Donald, the old crazy man, definitely had the right idea. And shoot, we're in deeper than I thought we were. Come on, so I guess I start in the morning. <laughs> new job. Shannon, I guess. I love new jobs. Ezra, I'm confused. Come on, it's just the way these things go, kid. You go for a tour in a place and end up in servitude. Chimbug. Huh, well, that still gives us a few hours to run, right? Where's that ferry? Maybe whoever we are making this uh, shipment to is rich and they can pay off our debts. Maybe. Hopefully. Watch as it's um, just Weaver who's at the end of this. I think the first time I was here I noticed that there was a boat. Or it looked like there was a boating place. That's a weird looking boat. Can't quite put my finger on it. End of Act 3. We made it. That was a very long act. Um, this will have definitely been cut up into many shorter episodes because it took about three hours to play and I don't want you to sit here and for three hours in a row. Um, here and there along the echo. We've gotten quite far though. We're halfway through the game. I hope you liked all these previous videos and this one as well. Uh, if you did so, please hit the like button down below and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.